and then uh, we want to give that respect time for our prisoners. Okay. So I just want to say welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Jerry Thomas and I'm the organizer for the AIEA uh, webinar uh, series and I just want to welcome everyone. Uh, the first thing I would like presenters to do is type in the chat box your name, title, uh, department, uh, your institution, email, and phone number. Uh, this is just to have the attendees know who you are and then if they have any further questions after the webinar uh, just uh, how to contact you later sorry i wasn't supposed to push in <laughs> So the disclaimer, basically, we just want everyone to know that this webinar is being recorded and we, sorry, and um, the webinar, the recording will be posted on the AIEA uh, webpage for uh, students and educators to view. The AIEA webpage is at the AIEA YouTube channel. And then also we ask that for attendees to please hold questions for the questions and answer portion at the end of the presentation. Uh, if you'd like, you can use the chat box to ask your questions as well as we go through the presentation. And then um, me or Kim will cover the question and read it out loud to the presenters during the questions and answers time. And then we also ask uh, to please mute yourself by pressing the microphone button to the color red. And that's just so if there's any background noise that will be blocked out. So what is AIEA? Uh, AIEA is a nonprofit organization located here in Arizona. Uh, the Arizona Indian Education Association is a 501c3 nonprofit that was established uh, from a group of Arizona Indian educators uh, who recognized a need for us to come together and create a space for us to not only connect, but also to start uh, addressing the needs of our American Indian students, you know, K through 12 and also beyond. So we decided to come together as a collective. Um, during the 1970s, we had a different name from the from AIEA, but we were established in 2003 under the name of Arizona Indian Education Association. Um, we, um, my name's Jerry Thomas, like I said, and I'm the secretary uh, since 2016. I was elected as the secretary for AIEA. And also during those upcoming years, we decided to go electronic. So we do have a web page. Um, it's under the um, Indian, the Intertribal Council of Arizona's uh, website. It's called www.itcaonline.com backslash AIEA. We also have our webinar series posted on our YouTube channel. If you look under the Arizona Indian Education Association, and we also have a Facebook um, for AIEA uh, 2003. So the purpose of these AIEA education webinars is to come together during this time of social distancing where we would like to do workshops and we would like to work closer with our students and our parents. Um, for AIEA, one of our needs that we like to address in our mission statement is that we want to connect with these parents, these families, uh, with these caring adults who look after our American Indian students who um, want to better help their students. And uh, sometimes, you know, their services aren't met at their schools. So what we would like is to come together and to address these uh, issues uh, in a more, um, I guess, convenient uh, Positions. So here, you know, we're working online. And one of the things that we noticed for May is that a lot of students are graduating 
Um, they're trying to decide if they're going to go to college or if they're going to uh, take a career path. So we decided to cover um, these uh, college uh, topics. So one of the things we um, covered in the beginning was uh, tribal scholarships. So we introduced a few tribal scholarships from Arizona, including Navajo Nation. We included Pasquayaki and then also the Tahanotham uh, Nation scholarship. And then also we wanted to start introducing um, colleges. So we included the three uh, Arizona State Colleges, Arizona State, University of Arizona, and Northern Arizona University uh, in our first session. And then we also included Ton Autumn Community College. We included uh, Diné College and also our um, TCU series, the Travel Colleges and Universities Part 1 series that you can see on our uh, YouTube channel. And then now for this portion, we are going to be covering uh, Travel Colleges and Universities Part 2. And I will hand it over to Kim, who is our AIEA president. Yep. All right. Well, now I qualify it. Hats out to you. My name is Kimberly Dinkoffi Gay. As Sherry mentioned, I am uh, the current president for AIEA. Um, we also include legislative effort um, issues that occur throughout Indian country. And this is something we also highlight during our um, general meetings that we want our membership to be aware of and to keep abreast of what's happening throughout Indian country uh, because it may directly or indirectly affect them because we work with so many students um, and families. And so one of the things that we like to highlight are actually on the local, state, and federal. Um, these, are, these are just a few examples of what we touch base on and highlight. Uh, for local issues, we talked about the House bill uh, for the state of Arizona, which was number 2120. This this particular bill was introduced um, specifically for cultural regalia to be worn at our high school graduations. Um, we were hoping that this would um, be pushed through. Um, this was a, a, obviously before the pandemic took place um, that we were advocating. A lot of educators and stakeholders were um, addressing the Congress here in the state of Arizona to have this uh, bill pushed through because once pushed through, it became effective immediately, which would have <laughs> that all of our seniors and graduating um, native students would have been able to um, wear their cultural regalia, not only for our native students, but this also included any indigenous um, person or student who graduated that um, they're able to wear their cultural regalia from whatever indigenous nation they came from. Uh, but this also, as mentioned, also included our Native American students um, here in the States. So that was one of the issues we talked about that we discussed um, at our meetings, the next um, one of the other legislative efforts, which is ongoing um, advocacy, is the border destruction in southern Arizona. All these are specific to the state of Arizona because it has an effect um, directly on a lot of our, again, our students and our families that are a part of services that we provide um, in our service area. Um, the border destruction that took place, um, which is still occurring, um, destroys a lot of sacred sites that are um, sacred to. Tana Otham people. And so um, with that border wall going up, um, this actually was a part of our March meeting. Uh, but since April, even though um, this whole um, pandemic has been happening, um, despite all that, um, this construction has been continuing to um, continue. Um, as of, I think I read the update earlier this week, that at least 24 of the 75 foot fence has already gone up um, or not foot, but um, I forget the exact measurements, but um, it's about maybe a quarter of a way, or if not a, at least half um, already completed. And so this is continuing to be a destructive site for the Tohono O'odham people um, in that area, specifically because they um, use explosives so they destroy the um, cultural land sites and the landscape that's in the area in order to create, um, to dig in the ground, to put these steel poles in and across the reservation area. And so it's very destructive. And it's um, one of the things that the tribal leaders um, throughout the state of Arizona are advocating against. And they want this to be stopped because it is interrupting um, and desecrating the sacred grounds for the Tahanawa Nation people. 
Um, so these are some of the highlights for, as far as what's um, we talked about at these meetings. As well. the, the other thing we talked about um, during that time was the Navajo Nation public hearings. Um, these were public hearings that were specific to the uranium ore mining that's taking place on Navajo land and uh, just wanting that feedback from the Navajo people um, specifically on what's occurring on their tribal land uh, regarding the illnesses that come about because of these mining issues that take place and the destruction that it causes for their people on their lands as well. And so these are some of the local things that we talk about on the statewide perspective, um, just to help our educators and our stakeholders and our students to understand what's happening. And again, just to be aware of what's taking place um, in our area. On a federal level, we talk about, um, during that time we talked about the, it's an Indian child welfare case, the Bracky versus Burn card, which is formerly the Zinke case, which was the former director for that. Um, this is specifically because it involves Indian Child Welfare, um, the act that was created. Um, this case was brought up um, by a couple, and a non-Native couple from the state of Texas, and they had wanted to adopt um, children, tribal children. And so they, they brought this suit against um, the federal government stating that the act, the Indian Child Welfare Act, was unconstitutional. Um, the courts at that time agreed with them. Um, they had an appeal and um, it overturned that um, decision. So that's the current decision that it stands right now. Um, in January of this year, they had an inbound hearing where they were going to reopen and rehear the case brought um, for the plaintiffs uh, for, this, for this Texas couple. And they're trying to overturn that decision stating that the ICWA is unconstitutional. Constitutional. If that happens, what that means for our tribal people, our uh, native communities, is that it, any native children who are involved with foster homes or adoption agencies, uh, the tribes will not have that first choice to bring them back home to where our communities, our communities can raise our children. And so, if this takes place, then they don't have to um, ask our tribes, um, our tribal nations if that's an option for them. They can look elsewhere and take our children away from our communities and raise them outside. And so the ICWA was set in place to help enhance that cultural perspective, to instill those traditional teachings and to keep our children, um, whether it's a member of their own family or a relative um, that helps raise children in that way. So that's one of the um, issues that we really highlight because our school districts and our schools that we partner with um, or that our members of our organization are really involved with helping and servicing these families. And so with that, um, this is the reason why we bring up this case specifically. Um, the other thing was just the federal budget at the time. Um, there was a lot of cuts. Um, we talked specifically about the Indian education budget cuts that were taking place across the nation, um, specifically for our Johnson O'Malley programs that were losing the funding across the board. And so these are some highlights that we talk about during our general um, AIEA meetings. And so we encourage you, if you would like um, updates on these to be become a member first and foremost, uh, because there are benefits that go along with being a member of the Arizona Indian Education Association. And so um, if you have any questions, feel free to email us to our Gmail. We'll put that up in the chat box soon so that you can have access to that for any questions that you may have. Um, in regard to what we do. And so I'll turn it back over to Jerry. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kim. So next up, we have uh, Daniel uh, Sestiaga from Tan Autumn Community College, and he's going to be providing us a definition of what a tribal college and university is. Uh, Danny, are you on the line? Yeah, I'm here. All right. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, first, I want to say thank you to uh, AIA for inviting me back to just reshare some information on tribal colleges and universities. Skutash, Aniam Chigik Daniel Sustiaga. Good day. My name is Daniel Sustiaga, and I am currently the uh, Special Projects and Initiatives Manager at Thana Autumn Kukud Hamashtumakud, otherwise known as Thana Autumn Community College. And um, so today, I just wanted to give a, just a brief um, introduction and really just talk a little bit about tribal colleges and universities and how they really came to be the institutions that they are. Um, 
So tribal colleges are unique institutions of higher education. They provide relevant and meaningful educational opportunities to both tribal and non-tribal members. Um, and when we think back to a time of uncertainty and all the things that Native and tribal communities have gone through in the past you know, 100 years, this whole concept of sovereignty and the right uh, to self-governance has been at the center of the conversation. Um, and tribal co uh, and excuse me and colleges and universities while they did exist um, they existed but they never have had or existed in a way that native students were really at the center focus and so during the 1960s um, there was a surgence of uh, indigeneity and a reclamation of native culture language teachings and even a certain tribal authority and the navajo nation was the first to pursue that endeavor and created Navajo Community College in 1968. And soon that, you know, there was this uh, whole movement and the approach was really followed by others. And so in 1975, um, the Self-Determination Act really allowed tribes to start taking more control of things like health and education. Um, and furthermore, in 1978, President Carter signed the Tribally Controlled Community Colleges Act and really allowed for the first and newer colleges uh, throughout the years to get federal funding and to be supported. So TCUs are really no different from uh, historically black colleges and universities. They are unique in their institutions, um, where they were created for their people to attend a college where students come from a similar background. Most often allowing students to seek higher educational opportunities and many exist to provide a safe and relevant learning space um, for their nation and their tribes. Majority of not all TCUs infuse concepts of sovereignty, self-determination, languages, beliefs, values, cultures into their overall structure and even their daily operations. So um, fast forward to today, uh, there are 37 tribal colleges under the American Indian Higher Education Consortium, otherwise known as AHEC. Uh, they span across the United States with many existing really in the Northern Plains area. Uh, all the way up north, or, you know, our northernmost uh, community college would be a Slavic community college in Barrow, Alaska, and our southernmost being, you know, Thonautham Community College. Um, there are a few colleges out there right now that are currently seeking accreditation, and one of those does include San Carlos Apache College uh, here in Arizona. <clears throat> and one of the things that I want to mention um, just briefly is when I mention accreditation, it really means that the college or university um, that has been accredited has gone through a process to ensure that the degrees and classes or courses that they offer have met a, a national standard or criteria. And so this means that the course um, that you would offer or take at a local college would be the same that you would probably take at a, at a big, you know, four year institution at a university. Um, and I'm sure our presenters might touch on that later on. And I'm really excited to have um, and to hear from our, our presenters that are on the webinar today, uh, these TCUs that are going to be presenting, they do awesome work and they serve their communities in a number of capacities. And I'm really glad to see that my colleagues are joining us from other TCUs and sharing that important information. Um, so in closing, um, I just want to mention that, you know, TCUs are just an awesome place to be. Uh, if you are looking for a place-based education with a focus around Native perspective, um, they are really a place to consider uh, for your education. And furthermore, just know that TCUs are not just community colleges, they are universities, um, with some offering bachelor's and even master's degrees. So uh, with that being said, thank you, um, Jerry. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Danny, for providing us a great definition. You're welcome. <laughs> so next, we're going to come to our featured presenters. And these featured presenters are tribal community colleges and universities that are going to be covering the following information. Uh, first, we're going to go to Jarvis Draper from Navajo Technical University. Hi, Jarvis. Hello, um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, good afternoon. I introduced myself in my language, um, said my clans and my relations. So, um, today we'll be talking about our institution, Naval Technical University. 
um, where uh, we have endless possibility. That is one of our main um, mottos and slogans there at Naval Technical University. Uh, Naval Technical University knows that every student has the innate ability and intelligence to learn and acquire the knowledge and skills to enhance their social, economic, and cultural values. That is um, our vision for Naval Technical University. Just inserted that. Um, if we go on to the next slide. Our mission statement at Navajo Technical University is to provide university readiness programs, certificates, associate, baccalaureate, and graduate degrees. Students, faculty, and staff will provide value to the Diné community through research, community engagement, service learning, and activities designed to foster cultural and environmental preservation and sustainable economic development. The university is committed to a high quality, student-oriented, hands-on learning, environmental based on the net cultural principles in Sakes, Nata, Ina, and Sihisin. So with um in Sakes, Nata, Ina, and Sihisin, we implement that. Um we try to encourage that for our students um when they come to Navajo Tech. First time they step on campus, first time they step in the classroom in Sakes in, in English means uh thinking they're gonna think. Not uh, is planning, enough is life, and see us in reflection. So we want them to have this process instilled in their mind. In Sidecast, they're going to plan for a goal. They're working toward to an educational goal at Navajo Tech. So we want them to think about it, think about how they how they can uh, attain that goal. Not uh, next, they're going to plan for that goal. They're going to uh, lay out a plan where they can make where they can uh, successfully uh, reach their goal. Enough after they plan that goal, they're going to live it. Uh, Ina is the living process of it. They'll go to classes, they'll do the homework, they'll get involved with events on campus. So and then the last portion is Sihisin. That's where um, we translate that as a self-reflection. So at the end of the semester, at the end of the day, did they reach the goal that they wanted? They reach that goal that they um, set out for themselves. And in the end, if it's a good, good, if it, if they're successful or Rather, or if they're successful, other than other than that, uh, unsuccessful, we just want them to go about. If they if they fail, we want them to restart the whole process again. So, thinking, planning, living, and self reflection. That's what in some case not to, you know see some means to us. Go ahead and next slide, please. Um, admissions at Navajo Technical University is fairly easy. Um, <laughs> You just complete and sign the into admissions application with personal information for the student. Um, alongside the application, you'll turn in a copy of your CIB. That's how we operate at Navajo Tech. That's the two different tuition rates at Navajo Tech. Um, for uh, which I'll later explain on later on the slide. Um, alongside the CIB, we'll ask you to turn in your copy of your social security card also, just to verify the name and SS number. Um, if you're a uh, brand new student, very new student, first year student will ask you to turn in your uh, high school transcripts and our official general education development, which on either one will indicate a graduation date, a passing result from the state competency exam. Um, on the GED, the score has to be 45 or above in all subject areas. Um, high school transcripts will be waived if the transfer student has 24 or above credit hours or has an associate's degree. Bringing us to if you're going to transfer from another um, institution, higher education institution, we'll ask you to send over your official college transcripts from your previous institution. And if you're a military veteran, we'll ask you to send over a copy of your DD-214. Um, also, part of our admissions program at Navajo Tech, um, Navajo Tech does support our veterans who serve, for, who serve by providing certificate and degree programs. Um, if you have further questions on this, um, you can always reach out to Navajo Tech. Um, veterans consider applying for GIB, GIB bill benefits should go online, gibill.va.gov GI to access the veterans online application website to complete their, their VA form. And then we'll send over to our financial office at Navajo Tech. Um, another thing about our first year students, our students who transferred to Navajo Tech or want to join Navajo Tech, they'll go through AccuPlacer testing all students are required to take the AccuPlacer placement test to place students in the appropriate math and English courses. 
Uh, transfer students who have successfully completed a college level English and math with a C or better or no, with at another institution will not have to take the test if the course was completed within the 10 year frame of admission date on the application. That's just part of the our admissions process too. So, okay, next slide. Tuition and fees at Navajo Tech. At Navajo Tech, our tuition rate per credit hour is seventy-one dollars and twenty-five cents. Um, the way we the way we chart the way we do the way we have our tuition rate at Navajo Tech is a a CIB holder and a non CIB holder. So, and our program fee is one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Our tech fee is fifty-five dollars. Library fee for is fifty dollars. Athletic fee is fifty dollars. Activity fee is fifty dollars. So at some of our campuses here in Chinle, we don't have um we don't have a library. We don't have a wellness center or, or like a gymnasium, but we still we still charge um these students these fees because it goes it kind of goes back into um activity stuff like when we throw events, we host events, and we do stuff for the students and. We'll use those funds from those fees and apply it here at the um, smaller sites, like like my like where I work at here in Chinle. The, um, the credit rate for a non CIB holder is um, almost double the seventy one twenty five, and uh, that's just how we that's that, that's 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 how we operate uh, here at Navajo Technical University. So a breakdown on the screen is um, this is for a full time student. This is just the tuition and fees of full-time students, 12, um, 12, hour, 12 credit hours, like four classes, $1,180 at Navajo Tech. And there's a breakdown if you were to take two classes and be prorated at six hours, $527.50. So that's just our program fees and um, our tuition and fees at Navajo Tech. Uh, next slide, please. Um, here's our uh, residential living costs and meal plans. I was, I am a student, a uh, former student alumni of Navajo Tech. So I did stay at our main campus in Crown Point after I attended the Chilton campus. I did stay in um, the dormitories there. It's an all male dorm and all female dormitories. And there are also family houses available to families. So for one semester at Navajo Tech in the fall or spring, you're charged $1,140. For a dorm at Navajo Tech, for family housing, for one semester, either in the fall or spring, you're looking at two thousand two hundred fifty dollars for one semester. In the summer, for our summer courses, they're priority at six weeks. For the dorms, you'll get charged five hundred seventy dollars, and for family housing, it's uh, one thousand dollars. Our meal plans we offer, we do have a full cafeteria on campus at our main campus in Crown Point. And here's our meal plans. You can get the three meal plan Monday to Friday, or the two two meal plan Monday to Friday, the one meal plan, and you'll see the prices there. Um, when I was going to school at our main campus in Crown Point, I was on the two meal plan, and I survived off of that Monday to Friday. And sometimes the weekends, I would stay on the weekends in the dormitory. And 1,120 is what I survived on. Um, the good thing about our meal plans too, we do have a small snack shop on campus and you can use your meal plan there for smaller snacks in the evening or in the morning. So we do have that. The picture there is going to be our school did get approved for future dormitories. And um, that's uh, a little snapshot of what could possibly be at our main campus in Crownport, New Mexico within the years to come. So we do have that coming. Okay, next slide. At Navajo Tech, we offer um, 25 certificate programs, uh, 20 associate programs, 10 bachelor programs, and we do have one master's program right now. And that is the only master's program that is offered on Navajo Nation right now. But we hopefully look to look more from the Ned College and ourselves with the years to come, so that's a good thing. On the master's program, it was it started in 2014. Uh, NT School of Graduate Studies and Research began a master of arts degree in the net culture, language, and leadership. Uh, the total graduate credit hours are 39. A bachelor degree is required prior to admission and other documentations, uh, CIB and uh, 
three eligibility letters for tribal eligibility, of course, I mean, and three letters of recommendation. And with that, that that's a different process. So the, the, the graduate program, you will have to talk to Dr. Henry Fowler. He's the, he's the person overlooking the master's program. Um, other than, um, then we have our Bachelor of Arts degree in the Net Cultural Language and Leadership Business Administration, our Bachelor's of Applied Science degree in Information Technology, Computer Science, and New Media, and also Advanced Manufacturing Technology, Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in Creative Writing and New Media, Bachelor of Science degree in Biology, um, Electrical Engineering. Our Electrical Engineering is a bit accredited, um, Early Childhood Multicultural Education. Our industrial engineering also is a bit accredited in environmental science and natural resources. And then here's another listing of our associate's degree. Associate of Arts degree in counseling, general studies, associate of science degree in early childhood, multicultural education, and mathematics. Associates of applied science, um, that's a longer listing, accounting, administrative office, um, a specialist, automotive, technology, a lot of so on. So with our certificate programs, it's pretty much similar to our associate program. You can see the numbers up top. We do have 20 programs in the associates and 25 certificate programs. So those, um, so once a student graduates or promote, graduates with a certificate program, we try to encourage them to pursue their associates because pretty much we have their their certificate and also in an associates program. So we try to encourage our students not to just come to that would take for a certificate, but also an associate program and then a bachelor program. That's how I started. I started off with a certificate, graduated, got my associates, graduated, then got my bachelor's. So, okay, next slide, please. Scholarships at Navajo Tech. So, these are some of the popular scholarships that our students apply for at Navajo Tech. The very popular one is. Um, American Indian College Fund. Uh, American Indian College Fund has been funding our students and fund, when I was a student, it funded me. Um, there are two scholarships that they offer. One is the TCU scholarship, which is open every semester. And the other is the full circle scholarship, which is only, you can only apply for that once academic, in the academic year. Um, the good thing about the TCU is you can apply that, at, you can apply for that if you go to a TCU. For the full circle one, it doesn't just apply to TCUs, it applies to other, um, bigger universities, non-tribal universities, you can apply for the full circle on that one too. And then the Navajo Nation Scholarship, um, we do have that, our students um, apply for that and they get that to invest in Navajo Nation. And um, you can, I also have the um, link there to these websites. Another one that our students use is the American Indian Services. I've used this also, I've applied for this scholarship and then was awarded um, the unique thing about the American Indian Services, they award quarterly. So depending on when your semester starts or how your institution operates, you can apply for that. And they do four on um, four awards quarterly. Now here on Navajo Nation, we do have um, Navajo Tribal U Utility Authority, and they also offer scholarships for our students depending on their, their program of choice. So you can, um, Check out their link and um, print out their scholarship. Um, number five, the Tom Davis Scholarship and Penium Scholarship. Those are scholarships um, that our universities promote and is strictly through our university too. Well, the Penium, I, I believe, is open to New Mexico, but the Tom Davis is uh, strictly for Navajo Tech. Um, you do, that is a merit based uh, scholarship. Um, up to five students and a certificate, an associate, and a bachelor's degree. So 15 students combined, they apply for that in five, five students in each program for certificate associates of bachelor would get that award. But the thing is, you only can get that award once, once at your whole career, your whole, your whole schooling time at Navajo State. And then the last one is a chapter house scholarships. So we do offer, our chapter houses do assist our students with um, it may be a small amount of 250. I know the biggest amount in some chapters is like $500, but anything does help when you're going to these TCUs and oh, oh, that'll go toward your bill or some, if your bill is covered, that money will come back into your pocket, which will be of course to your educational goal or stuff for your dorm too, so. And when you're dealing with scholarships, it's always, it's always best to know when these due dates are. There's a lot of due dates 
I'm just best to know best to get it in before the due dates, all the documents that they require. So oh, sorry. Everybody's out of the office, so got it. Okay, next slide. Um, student life, um, some of the bigger student, uh, this is a look at student life on campus right now. Uh, some of the things uh, that are pretty unique at Navajo Tech and very different. Um, <laughs> I put on here special events like sheep butcherings, uh, special guest speakers. They inform our students about ceremonies and traditional oral stories. It could be like during the winter times, we do have our winter ceremonies like the Yeva Chase and with, um, with some, so we'll ask, we'll invite some guests, special guest speakers to come and inform our students on how these um, ceremonies operate the the whole idea of it of why we why we do all these um ceremonies and tensions of it and the summer ceremonies and just old creation stories too so we have that another big day we have on campus is a feast day at Navajo Tech uh, we'll have um, different variety of stews made made by staff or students and that's always a big time event we and during those times, we'll have like a good um, social gatherings. We'll tell stories and jokes on campus and stuff. It's where it's a chance for staff, faculty, and students to interact and share a meal and get to know one another. Uh, we do have various clubs within the school. One of the biggest ones that we try to get students involved in was the ACES, American Indian Science and Engineering Society. We do have a National Technical Honor Society of NTU. You can see the picture on the top left. That's um, a current picture of our National Technical Honor Society of our in, at NTU. That's his clubs. Some of the we do have a lot of clubs. I believe the last time I counted, we had 20 clubs on campus, and that's just some of them. Is the Prevet Archery Law Club. We do have social gatherings on campus. Um, the song and dance here. We do have that in our. We do have a First Nations Skyhawk Club, and they usually do a, a powwow every semester. Toward the toward finals in the spring and the final, they host a powwow for students. And then the top right picture with the horse that's our vet tech club, pre vet club, I should say, pre vet club. And they host, um, they try to help out the community. They get in their community service hours, and that's how they do it. They'll invite some community members to bring their animals and they'll get their hands on training with um, these animals. Also, so at Navajo Tech, we do have royalty. Um, here's our current Miss Navajo Tech. Um, she's a dual major. She was a she did welding and also in our uh, environmental science too. So that's that's um, some student life some student life information and some pictures about Navajo Tech. Couldn't do didn't put a whole lot on one slide. So okay. Oh, uh, that, that's just uh, information about my about myself. Um, you can write it down if you need to. But uh, next slide is going to be our contact information for Navajo Technical University. <coughs> it's going to be a picture of uh, one of our uh, graduations uh, for Navajo Tech, and we do have President Nez who tries to our Navajo Nation president who. Tends to come out to our graduation and, and influence our students to go further and push themselves, and also try to engage with the with the crowd, to let them know that higher education is possible. For, no matter your age, no matter where you come from, no matter your background. Um, some contact information on there. Uh, we do have offices across Arizona and New Mexico. Our main campus in Crown Point, New Mexico. Some smaller campuses in New Mexico will include the Zuni instructional site and the Kirtland instructional site. Here in Arizona, we have two campuses, the one I work at, Chinle, Arizona, and in Tisnas Bus, Arizona. And that is my little presentation and information. Great. Thank you, Jarvis. You provided a really good information. That I think Thank you, Jerry, helpful. for yeah. inviting me. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right, next up, we're going to have Marissa Lewis from the College of the Muscogee Nation. I appreciate it so much. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, 
Jerry froze. Oh, I'm sorry. One second. <clears throat> Everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. Sorry. We have Marissa Lewis from the College of the Muscogee Nation. Uh, Marissa, you can start whenever you like. Hence, Jay, S. Don't go. Marissa Lewis, George of Godos, Muscogee, Adal, and Nachoga, Mahaga, Sahawija, and Dakida. Um, hello, my name is Marissa Lewis, and I work at the College of Muscogee Nation. I've been with the Tribal College for eight years, and currently I'm the Student Success Center Coordinator. I'm half Muscogee Creek and half Seminole, so I'm really excited to show you what our Tribal College has to offer you. I'll start with the mission. Um, the College of Muscogee Nation is the institution of higher education for the Muscogee Creek Nation, emphasizing Native culture, values, language, and self-determination. The college provides a positive learning environment. Academic encourages lifelong professional development advancement. That's the foundation for our college. And then next we have um, five core. The Salmon Core written in the Muscogee Creek language. Beside it is the English word, so I'll pronounce those in the Muscogee Creek. Just a quick lesson. The V's in our language sound like A. And then the R's have a, like a th. The C's are like a J sound and are like a B B sound. So the first word is Aklakwichka, which is respect. Budgeta, integrity, responsibility. Iaskita, humility. Koboplinga, which is wisdom. And that last one, just do some content. Um, it's an insight from scholarly learning and the knowledge and experience of our elders. And something like a speaker series, elderly on campus. This with our Their stories, generational knowledge, and it was really interesting. Part of those series and learned a lot from uh, my elders and was able to share career paths and college paths and just different life lessons. So, uh, you know, we did this spring. That was really hopefully what we to do in the. So, a little back about the Tribal College. We were established in 2004. So that is fairly new when you're thinking in general. So that's only 16 years we've been in existence. Um, we're located in Okmulgee, Oklahoma. If you can see that map, that top, top picture, we have seven counties and um, in the middle of um, Muscogee Creek Nation. And then under that is the state of Oklahoma. So you can see where we're located in, as in the United States. So we're right in the middle of the United States, towards the southern part. Um, we are a 1994 land grant institution and are accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. As Daniel was saying, you know, that is a long, rigorous process. And the initial accreditation in 16. So that's only four years after we um, are accredited for five years, then we can add more programs. You'll see later that, you know, we have limited, um, but hopefully in the future that'll change. And a little bit of background on our fall enrollment. We had um, 204 students enrolled at CMN for fall. Now we are fairly small. So, you know, a that's pretty much like our students going to high school. It's along the same um, 
context. So our class have any more or more than 32 students per class. You get that one-on-one -on -one attention from your instructor. I feel like pretty much we become family here. All that, you know, we know all of our students and our students. So we start to become family by the end of grade. So it's a really good environment. Out of those 204 students, 160 of those were full-time, 106 male and 98 were male. So that's a good ratio, you know, male to female population. Next slide. Degree, well, um, associate degrees, and then we have two certificate programs, and then hopefully to add some more in the future. So we have new studies, tribal services, general studies, gaming, criminal justice. Um, we have a certificate in gaming and a certificate in Muscogee language. Now, the majority of our students have graduated with the tribal service services degree or we have this degree program that is more if you're gearing towards working for the tribes or tribal entities we also um, currently now are seeing that majority of our students so that's just like a broad general course for if you want to get your degrees your core courses done and then transfer to a more specific um, degree program. As you can see, you know, ours are kind of, you know, if you want to go into the gaming industry or you're looking to work, you know, for criminal justice, justice um, system or um, tribal police, you know, those go into general studies. But um, for the certificates, um, overall processes of the gaming industry and the Muscogee language, you'll be learning the language, reading, writing, and speaking. So, they give a percentage for um, employees that can speak the language. So we have a lot of tribal members that will come and get the language and then they get a pay increase for knowing the language and being able to speak. So that's one of the degree or that certificate. And then I wanted to um, mention a couple of advantages of attending a TCU. Now, this isn't, this isn't all of them. This is just what I wanted to highlight and what kind of pertains to our tribal college. So if you decide one of these degree programs is something that interests you and you want to come to our school, you know, the majority of here are and our members are Native American. You're going to have 98% student population are Native. That's almost every year we have 98 99 97% and then for fact i think the last time that we did the numbers it was about 70 to 80 and um, of course that changes with turnover you're going to be taught by native instructors and go to school with you know other native students and then also our courses our curriculum is culturally influenced. One thing specific high skills lessons. So that's class or after class. And we'll talk about shared experiences, pretty much just getting us to talk and see how um, not so different that we are, how what things that we have in common, more of a community building and just learning from each other, you know, that shared knowledge. So that's something that's really good. And I know that other um, courses are doing that as well. And then to cultural preservation, such as the language, even with our buildings, you know, they have cultural emphasis, the language on signage. We have um, days where we encourage speaking only. And then of course, like all, activities are culturally influenced like we'll a friendly game stickball or we'll do like stomp dance demonstrations different things like that um, moccasins and just different activities of course affordable higher education we strive here at CMN, CMN to 
graduate debt free. Um, we don't offer any loans and we try to provide as much scholarship funding as we can. So um, I find that most affordable compared to other colleges and universities. Okay, next slide. So this is our general admissions application check. I submitted the form on, or gave an example of the form, and then the check points. Um, you will be able, you'll, you'll have to sign a CMA agreement, just acknowledging that you understand you're entering college and expected of you. Um, you'll need to submit records like your vaccine, your physical, official high school or college transcripts, your ACT scores, your tribal citizenship call, a driver's license, state issued ID, and we'd also ask uh, this is just to benefit you to make sure that you get receive all the funding that you're eligible for. So this is process, just general admissions. We also have concurrent admissions and that's for high school students and then um, special admissions if you only want to take like our basket weaving or flute making classes those kinds of things and you can find those applications on our website so next slide please cost of attendance so the tuition at cmn it's 146.50 per credit hour um, we also have a supplementary fee of 18 dollars and 50 cents that's for like your college ids your fitness center your computer lab those kinds of fees. We have a light enrollment fee of $10. How um, you wanted to stay in the dorms, it's $18.15 per, sem per semester. And um, we have 80 people. They're single living and they fill up pretty fast. So I want to let you know if you are interested, fill out your application and your housing application as soon as possible because they, um, quickly. And our residential meal plan is $1,200. And then our commuter meal plan is $80, which is, you know, you have to ha have nine hours or under, which is considered part-time. And book supplies, that's just estimation. And it really depends on how many credit hours that you take. So scholarship, CMN, we offer the CMN scholarship, which is for Muskogee Creek citizens. Um, we think that federal financial aid doesn't pay towards books, fees, tuition, meal plan, um, that extra cost. For other federally recognized tribal members, the CMN tuition waiver, we're going to pay up to 2000 towards those same costs, tuition, books, fees, room and board. So um, these are not competitive. They're part of the application packet. So you just fill it out, submit your um, tribal card, your CDIB card, and then you're eligible for that. So you don't have to write anything. It's just you know, pretty much proving your card, showing your card, submitting your tribal card. And then we also get funding from the American Indian College Fund. They give us a lump sum every year, and then we're able to disperse those, those additional funding to students. And that's for any CMN student that's enrolled. And then I wanted to be sure to check with your higher education department or your career development um, at your tribe to see if they have any funding for your education and complete as many scholarship applications as, pol as possible. You know, whichever ones you're eligible for, just um, fill them out and submit them. And then be mindful of deadlines. I know June 1st is a big deadline. Um, October 1st for FAFSA, you know, the sooner you fill out some of these scholarships, the more funding you receive or the higher on the list that you get. So just be mindful of those things and submit and try to get as much funding as you can for your education. Okay, next. Support services that we have at the Tribal College. Um, I'm the Student Success Center 
our coordinator. So my umbrella, we do um, different things like tutoring, um, retention support, um, counseling, testing, like AccuPlacer and uh, next generation. ACT residual, those types of things. And then I also advise and enroll. So if you decided that you did want to come to the college, you, I would probably be the first play, person that you um, get. I'll come, you'll come to me, we'll enroll, pick out your courses, and then I'll teach the college cornerstone class and get you introduced to college. So you have the Student Success Center, the Learning Center that has a academic specialist here every day. And then we also have and peer mentors in there. There's free tutoring. We have a laptop program. If you don't have a computer at home and need access to um, a laptop, you can check those out at the library. We have health and wellness programs. They put on different events like um, we, do, we do yoga class, um, stress relievers. We have um, little sand gardens and we've made all kinds of different things in that class. <laughs> weighted blankets. Or it's not a class, but that program. And then we have um, emergency aid funding. For instance, let's say your car breaks down and you need help getting to school. Um, we can take care of some of those emergencies. You just have to fill out an application and then, um, you know, we'll see if you're eligible for that or not. And then paid internships opportunities. We have students that are interested in paid internships. There, we had one student in particular, she was in the um, criminal justice degree program and went and worked, interned at the Light Horse and was offered a job at the end. So we've had good success with their internships. And then some of the organizations campus, we have, which is a student housing organization, Student Senate, which I'm the sponsor of that one, um, Tribal Leadership Circle, they do um, all kinds of different activities. We have ABLE, the American Indian Business Leadership, ACES, and our Honor Society, which is Phi Theta Kappa. So there's things to do here on campus. Next, please. And if you want me to send you um, an application packet or you just want to talk to me about some of the degrees or if you're in Oklahoma and you wanted to come and check out the campus you can give me a call email me and then I can take you on and then um, right there on that little picture is our um, school code in case you out fence and does your your financial aid award or anything and then it has information like our website which is cmn.edu where you can find all of this information on there as well. So, thank you for listening to me. And it was a pleasure talking to you guys. And I hope I see you here on campus. Great. Thank you, Marissa. That was really good information. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, we're going to do a question and answers time. Uh, if you have any questions for any of our presenters or AIEA representatives, uh, you can use the chat box or unmute your line to ask your question. Kimberly. Um, I just wanted to uh, let everybody know that, again, these webinars are being recorded and are being uploaded to our um, YouTube video, I'm sorry, our YouTube channel. And I did put our information for AIEA information, our web links and our um, Facebook page, our website, and also our YouTube link and the chat box. So I encourage you to um, copy those and so you'll have them for future use as well. Um, I also included some many resources that we've been providing at each of our webinars as, as far as our FAFSA, um, the Navajo Nation um, scholarship information, and also the American Indian College Fund. Um, so please uh, copy and uh, so you'll have those at your um, resource if you need to uh, 
share them or even use for your personal use with that. Uh, and thank you, Jarvis and Marissa, for your presentations. Um, I did want to ask um, each of you and what you mentioned. Um, we'll start with you, Jarvis, as far as uh, what uh, cultural activities you provide on campus. If you could just elaborate a little bit more for um, those who may not know what the song and dance is and just about um, what 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 do you do and um, how is it performed and uh, the purpose behind that. If you could just elaborate a little bit on that, please. Yeah, the uh, song and dance is um, it's like a social dance, but sometimes they'll, they'll have judges. And um, for our students, we usually try to um, engage our students to, to, to participate. So we'll have some awards. So the way the song and dance works, well, there's a group of members that sing, sing songs and you dance with a partner, um, a male partner, a female partner, and you dance in your circular, in the circular form, your partner and there's like a high step along with like a two-step motion um it's it's got to use your rhythm kind of thing it's just a social dance and some that um we like to perform and that like we like to host at our school we, it, it's a time for our elders and some of our youth and some of our students to engage and just engage one another's um communication and just be amongst be, be amongst one another so just like sometimes we do have some students who questions like what is the purpose of this and then we'll let them know or we'll ask them to sit down with an elder and any questions that they may have and they can talk to that elder and learn a little a little bit more about the song and dance i for one i've, I've won second place before One of the uh, so, uh, the song and dance. You gotta ask different partners and have a song. So. Nice. Thank you, Jarvis, for sharing that. Um, is there a, a story or the any cultural te teachings behind? We'll do that. Or um, well, that? It originated from our some one of some of our ceremonies, the biggest one. It's called, called in Navajo. It's called it's an enemy way ceremony, and that that style of dance is, is what is popular there during that ceremony. It's a seven like seven day ceremony that goes on for a week. It's usually between um, the main patient and the other patient, and there's a staff that goes from one location to another location. They ride horses, and it's like a bunch of camping out. And it's just I'm, at, um, there's like night special nights. There's the first night where the patient will take the main staff to the other residents, and then the second night is where the the person that received the staff they're going to go back to the original location. That second night is to that second residential. It's kind of hard to during those nights they have these social dances like that and sing to the early morning. There's a huge bonfire and people just sing and dance all night. The way that works is you don't dance with your same clan, you don't dance with your same relatives. So you are related to, and that's how that works. All this is just at the same time, and, and that's what it originated from the song and dance. Now it's more social. It's not dance, it's more social and more for engagement, but we still have a ceremony calling it Dao, it's an anyway ceremony, and that's kind of like where it originated from. And so, uh, for social for social gatherings and stuff like that. Okay. Um, we do have one question from the chat. Um, is there a uh, no, not in, not in state or out of state? Just the CIB holder and CIB holder. That's how do, how do our tuition rate differ? Differ. So we don't have. Not we, in state or out of state. We don't have tuition either. Yeah, it's just um, if you're federal federally tried with the CIB, then you'll get the CIB tuition. CIB holder, you'll get the yeah, non CIB tuition rate. Thank. You. Okay, there were any other questions just yet in the chat? Uh, 
going back, Marissa, um, could you elaborate a little bit about what the stomp dance is? <laughs> I don't think there's a <laughs> for that, but um, so quick. Oh, good. Okay, so um, pretty much there we do stomp dance demonstrations here at the Tribal College. Um, stomp dances are all throughout Oklahoma and of course um, they're secluded in private so um, they to you know the fire from our homeland since we are removed from Alabama Georgia area to Oklahoma so they take those fire, fire take them to their ceremonial ground and then they um, we dance around and when you call stop dance, it's we used to have turtle shells with you know inside that make like a shaking noise or stomp noise. Um, now most hands with beans or something in it, so it still makes that sound. I um, not traditionally at you know ceremonial, but that's. What they do is, you know, dance around the fire, and we do that for all different kind of of reasons. You know, our great corn ceremonies. That's kind of like that. like our New Year's. Right? Whenever they can eat corn and stuff, we just celebrate. So, I think that's the basic description I can give. Thank you for that encouraging because um, that's one of the reasons why we want to highlight our mm -hmm. TCUs, you know, um, during the because we have a very cultural aspect for all of our students and uh, to let the parents know and educators know that um, this is what is done at these um, tribal community colleges. It's, it's something that um, is encouraged and so it's good that you share um, does for us to help them stay culturally connected um, in that way. So um, it's nice to hear that um, that's shared, um, at even at that space for them. So one of the things that I had uh, really enjoyed, Marissa, with your presentation that you included about the emergency aid funding mm -hmm. uh, for students. Uh, I think that's something that a lot of our students at the higher education can really benefit from as far as um, even if they break down or anything like that. Can you talk a little bit about how that process is? Yeah, and it's um, fairly easy. Like I, like my brother, for example, he might not like this. <laughs> yeah, he went to the college, he broke his glasses, and then he needed them to be repaired. That was probably like, the two hundred dollars. So you, it's just the application process. Three of us on that panel, and um, you, just, you have receipts, and um, you're getting good stuff. Then you should be awarded. Um, we do, so, but um, yeah, each student has that opportunity available to them. We've done car repair, bills. If you're behind on your bills, your rent. We've funded. There's a lot of emergencies for our students. And then we also, you know, with received um, more. I work with American Indian College Fund on grants, and they're always asking us if we need emergency funding for our students and able to provide for our students. Um, that funding was of your students. I know a lot of um, universities are providing that um, assistance to students, um, as, you know, as far as our state with the state of Arizona, from our tri universities from ASU, U of A, and ASU. And so um, it was a uh, question on whether um, that's provided at a TCU level as well. So, um, Jarvis, is that being provided? Yes, we do have NTU emergency also? funding where students uh, would. Also, like Marissa said, it would cover some um, 
some bills if they need any phone bills, um, anything that'll help them come to make it to class. A vehicle problem to sue, that bill would go toward that or just like electric bills. Kind of give them proof that, okay, we're here now here for you. you know, this is what we can help you with to continue to make it to your class, to continue to make to come to Navajo Tech too. So we do have that emergency funding for our students as well. Thank you. That's all the questions I have, and um, I don't see any more in the chat. Oh. I'll turn it back over. Okay, yeah. Okay, sorry. yeah, Nadia, sorry. My uh, connect right now. connection is really yeah, good right now. But we're going to move on to the next slide, slide, which is the ending. So for quick updates for AIEA. So for updates for AIEA. We do have the student scholarship. We do have the student scholarship application at the IT available website. Um, the ITCA website. Um, you can go under www.itcaonline.com backslash AIEA, and that's July seventeenth. If you look, um, if you there is look an image and this right, is what it's gonna there look is an like. image, and this is what it's going to yeah, look like uh, when you uh, uh, go uh, the, to the a student scholarship is right page. As uh, a, a student scholarship, the application and it's going to have that click to download the application button, and it's going um, to save the image, and it's going to the PDF format for that so, application. Um, we are also, um, we are still planning a protecting our land summer use our. Camp. It's going to be a virtual protecting our land summer youth camp. It's going to be a camp planned um, for right hopefully now, July 2020. To do right now, the planning committee is, is hoping to do a four camp, and it's going to be a uh, virtual. We are still trying to figure out with which platform that is going to. Once we have uh, more information, we're going to give and also the monthly um, meeting. Out to our AIEA so um, out to our AIEA listserv. Next, we are still planning our second annual AIEA Educators Banquet. The tentative date is September 12th, uh, that Saturday, and we're hoping to do from 1 to 3 p.m. to accommodate um, those that are arriving not from the Phoenix area, but from around Arizona. And right now, we are tentatively uh, setting the state just because the social distancing measures we are hoping to do an in-person um, award ceremony which visitor center as we be at the Phoenix year, Indian Visitor Center as we, we did last year. But if not, we are also pending platforming for the option give out the platform awards. to be used to then we also give out the award. AIEA membership drive. We also have our um, AIEA membership drive, membership which um, the membership the application is also up on the ITCA um, webpage. And then lastly, our next upcoming um, it's going to our it's next New Friday. Um, it's going to be Native uh, American right now. American tuition we have planned is for Fort Lewis. Now um, all we have Fort planned Lewis is for Fort Lewis, um, Fort Lewis College um, from Colorado. Uh, we do have two well. others on deck as well. So we, we are still planning for the that, but, but once we have the set that available, we're going to um, set that AIEA out to members. our AIEA listserv um, members. Again, my name is, um, uh, again, my name is uh, Jerry Thomas, and send. Question. You can send uh, any of your inquiries at Jerry, J E R R I dot C H O online dot at ITCA direct cell phone number. You can call my direct cell phone number 867 And I just want to say thank you. And I just want to say thank you for everyone. Especially to meeting, our, and also thank uh, you, especially to you, our uh, presenters. You know, we appreciate all your hard work and dedication our, to our students, audience, but also and, uh, our um, for, audience uh, just and volunteering uh, your time. for uh, volunteering your time. Uh, does anyone have any? Uh, does anyone have any questions um, before we end this meeting? Um, before end this meeting. Uh, this is Kimberly. 
you very quickly, Jerry. Um, for those on the call, I did uh, put the link for our upcoming webinar series next week. Um, as Jerry mentioned, that's going to be our Native American tuition waiver webinar. Um, so if you want to copy and paste um, to a Word document, so that way you'll have it. Link there for next um, Friday, the 29th. We will start at one of them, which again would be um, one, two, three. What, what time would that be, Marissa? Three o'clock. Sorry, three o'clock central time. Three <laughs> And so um, we do want to um, try and get as students um, on the on the webinar sessions just so that they could have this information. Um, in High School Indian Nations University, Fort Lewis College, Fort Smith College, um, out of um, Eastern Far East. And so, so um, we or not. Uh, please be assured that we will get them uh, to participate in future webinar sessions. Uh, but again, the webinar session for next week, I posted in our chat group. Um, I'm sorry, in the chat box. So if you want to paste um, that information to where you can have it. Um, also, for our membership drive, as Jerry mentioned, accept cash or check. Um, if you go to the um, our website under ITCA, um, which was provided, um, again, chat box area, um, it has the information on and the address on where you can submit that. Um, check two, or um, if you want to, hopefully we'll convene that um, we will be able to take cash um, at as well too. Um, we are in person and meeting in person. We do accept cash or check um, either way, which is more uh, for you. Um, we do offer organization memberships, um, offer um, the LEAs, um, which are, um, are usually your school districts. And then we do also offer individual membership to AIEA. Um, right now, the square, which would be for card payments. Um, just we're, we're in the process of looking at alternate ways of accepting. Um, but as of right now, uh, we only accept cash or check for the member. Um, membership does run from it is a yearly membership again there's no benefits that go with uh, being a member of AIA including um, significant this to our summer camps during the registration process um, we do offer a significant dis discount to, um, if your organization is a part of AIA all students who attend your organization or school district get the same discount as well as our educators banquet there's a significant discount on um, participation rate for a lot of um, benefits that come along with you. Um, so I encourage you to uh, look at that. And if you have any questions, please send us um, your questions to our email at aiea.est2003 at gmail.com. So if anyone else doesn't have any questions in this webinar, uh, again, Good thank weekend. you all the presenters and for uh, uh, again, thank you all the presenters and you know thank you for all the attendees for joining us to be with well. us and you know thank you for joining us as well. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you everybody. All right, Eddie, have a good weekend. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be safe. Right. Bye bye. Thank you, Jarvis. Okay, Jerry, we could probably go ahead and